Hey everybody, welcome to another CrushLivePoker.com hand review, and we're going to take a look at a hand that I recently played at the Lodge live stream this past Saturday. Of course, the Lodge streams live games. Every Wednesday and Saturday, they do their big game on Saturday nights, which is what this is from. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and hit the like button. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm, and if you're not a subscriber, hit subscribe and turn notifications on. Also, if you want to watch more training videos like this, head over to crushlivepoker.com and you can use the coupon code YTPLAY to get the first 30 days for free. Now, also, the Lodge is actually expanding. They're making a room about two or three times the size of what they have now in Austin, a couple doors down from them. They are also doing a $2 million guarantee. They're calling it the Lodge Millionaire Mayhem in September of 2021. I think it's a thousand dollar buy-in, multiple flights. It is going to be really, really something. So as you can see, we are playing with uh, poker vlogger extraordinaire Mariano. He's got a great vlogging channel over there in seat nine. In this particular session was really almost like an embarrassment for me in terms of the amount of hands that I actually played. I ended up having a 16% VPIP over the course of three and a half hours. And it was so sort of disheartening, I actually went back in and took a look at all the hands that I actually had over the course of that period of time. And it was really amazing because I've played on hundreds of live streams and I charted out the hands that I had and uh, you can see the greens open raise, red was a three bet and uh, one four bet, which is actually what we're gonna be taking a look at. I had at one pair, over the course of three and a half hours, pocket fives, no ace king, no ace queen. I had ace jack off once, one suited connector, and a few suited aces, and that was literally it. Now, I put a link in the description to an unlisted video that I actually made cutting up all of my preflop hands and all of the folds with the chart. It's just something that I that I did. So if you're interested in looking at that, looking at my mental game as I fold away, you can click on the link in the description. It just goes to show you sometimes how these things really come in clumps, but it actually leads into sort of the way that I ended up playing this particular hand. And I think it's quite interesting. And we're gonna bring, bring up Poker Cruncher here as well, because it's gonna be a four bet pot. So it's basically 5, 5, 10, 20, this hand, which is like a lot of the hands which played this way. And Trey here with a $7,700 effective stack opens to 60 with ace, queen of diamonds. Mariano next to act in sort of the natural plus one spot with this many blinds and straddles out there. He's going to three bet with five, six of diamonds. And I do like that play. Uh, he wants a three bet to drive everybody out behind him. I think that this is going to show a much higher sort of expectation as a three bet as opposed to a flat. And that's kind of a newer school thought in poker these days, preflop. So open a 60, three bet to 180, and it gets over to me and I've got jack 10 of hearts. You can see here me with 9,700 on the button. Now this is a spot where I don't really like to do a lot of flatting of three bets because it can obviously open up the raising from the initial guy who can four bet. I usually like to play a four bet or fold strategy in this spot. I will say I might change it up a little bit this deep some of the time and get in there and play more hands actually in position. So you could make a case once in a while I could sort of flat here but I do have the button, and that's another reason why I could sort of flat, although we've got guys behind here, but they'd have to call three bets basically cold. But if I wasn't on the button here, too, more of a, even more of a case for, for four betting. But I do decide to four bet here this hand, and if I had folded, I think I would have just been absolutely ripped apart, even more so than I, you know, in the, in the live chat, too. I remember folding a hand on a different live stream with king-queen suited to a three bet. Uh, or I think to a four bet or something like that. So I decide to make the cold four bet here to 525, which is just under three X. And again, with a $20 sort of straddle, we're playing over say 350 big blinds effective with the initial opener. And then Mariano and I are very, very deep. So I go to 525 and something interesting happens here. And I think maybe at the time I didn't fully account for it in the hand rating, Trey, the initial opener, is going to call. 
And that's going to be important when we take a, start to think about his range here. So he makes the call. And then Mariano calls as well. This is interesting here because Mariano is getting quite the price, almost four to one. He's in the middle with the suited connector and he was the initial three better. We are deep, but it is hard to play a suited connector, especially from the middle going three ways. There's some reverse implied odds and it's just really, really hard to realize your equity uh, until the river. And then again, I mean, people close the action and the straddle or the big blind with five, six of diamonds getting three to four to one quite often. So I mean, I obviously I don't I don't mind the call. Here it is, it's a four bet pot, and we're three ways. It's one of these situations where it's very hard to sim, quote unquote, in a solver. So you're gonna lean on a lot of experience and things like that uh, when trying to figure out what to do. So the board comes out jack eight five here with a couple of diamonds, and you can see it's a huge, huge flop really for everyone. Trey has the nut flush draw and two overcards. Mariano has a pair and a flush draw, and of course I have top pair. So naturally, I would say 99% of the time, this is going to get checked over to the cold four better, and it does. So it gets checked over to me, and this is really my first sort of decision point here on this particular board. I mean, my hand does need a little bit of protection, and I think one of the other things too is, is that besides pocket jacks here, a set really shouldn't be represented as well as no, you know, two pair. And we'll throw in, we're going to do very, very slim partials of pocket eights at the end, looking at the equities. So one of the good things about my hand here with jack 10 is, of course, I block pocket jacks. So this is a pretty good flop for me. Now, I did for a second consider checking it back, but I think you'd probably want to check back hands where people could have very, very strong hands that are better than one pair given the preflop action. And that's really just not the case here. Like for example, if the board had come out queen 10, nine and we had aces or kings or something like that, but jack eight, five, no two pair represented really pocket jacks probably being the only set. So my hand needs uh, some protection and some value. And obviously I can get called by hands like nines, tens, you know, once in a while, ace king with the diamond, something like that. So it gets checked over to me. And uh, I decided to go 650 here, which is a little bit on the larger side. I mean, it's not like going crazy, crazy large, but one third would be like 525, something like that. So I bet 650 here gets back over to Trey. Now, the thing about Trey, I've played with him on a couple of live streams. I mean, he's a guy that usually isn't going to put in a lot of money without a big hand. And I think that ace queen of diamonds case could be made for the fact that this is a big hand. I don't think that he's making like an air ball bluff. When the decision came back around to me, there was a little bit of thought. Is there a possibility that he might ever do this with kings? You sort of go back to preflop, maybe that would be six bet off. And if he was just going to call with kings, probably a lot of the times he would just call. Now, he check raises here. So I bet 650. And he bumps it up to what was 2,600. It was actually, I think it was 20, 25, 25, but we'll call it 2,600 because that's what the graphics are going to say. These purples are 500s and the greens are quarters and the blacks are, uh, are hundreds. What's really, really interesting here, another decision point, and this time it's over to Mariano. We'll look at this spot. I mean, I think that Mariano, when he saw the flop, he was going to do something too on the flop against me with say like parent of flush draw. I mean, parent of flush draw is probably going to be 50, 50 against an over pair. If I had a hand like Kings, Queen, something like that, especially if I didn't block Jack X, would I want to play stacks for basically, you know, 10,000 with an over pair. But once Trey check raises now, and also Mariano has to worry about me behind him, his hand moves from considering check race semi bluffing me heads up and playing a huge pot to really like a spot that's kind of gross that really lean towards a fold and he thought about this for a long long time and the problem with his hand of, of course is that he can be in a situation where someone has a higher draw than him and then somebody else has a better made hand and when you're ever in a multi-way spot when someone else has a higher draw and someone else has a better made hand you have very very, very little equity. And you can see that's exactly what you know, he only really had 10%. So he gets out of the way. That's a good discipline fold. And now it's back around to me. 
And this is really one that I'd like to have back. I'd like to be put back into this spot because at the time, what I was thinking was, was that when Trey makes this 2,600 with 4,700 back, he's never folding. So a lot of times we can kind of treat that situation as an all in. So I knew that instead of making it say 2,600, I can consider this basically an all in for 7,300 and the pot would have been like 9,500, 7,300 for me to call. So one way to look at this is to treat this as an all in in the sense that instead of him raising a 2,600, he basically has just moved all in. And in that case, the pot would be 9,500 and he'd be shoving for 7,300 total. I've bet like 650. So it'd be about 6,600 for me to call for 9,500. And I knew that that was not great pot odds. And one of the simple ways to do this is take the total pot size, add the call amount, and then divide your call amount into the total pot size. I'm taking out some of the zeros and I would need about 41% equity. And I knew right off the top, I'm like, well, if he's got a huge draw, I'm flipping and then a set once in a while, I'm killed. But really where I kind of want to have this back is, is that we have stack depth left. And right now, it's about 1900 to 2000 for 4800 so right now i'm getting just under two and a half to one which would probably mean that i would need about 28 or 29 percent equity to continue on now of course the equity has not concluded but one of the things that you can do and this is almost kind of out of a plo play and this is really where i'd like to have this back is i could really call here and then get it in on nine on non-diamond turns if I thought that the great portion of his range consisted of diamond draws, say like a non-ace or a non-king, non-queen, and then a non-diamond turn. So I could call the 1900, the pot would be 6,700, and then, you know, he'd have 4,700 left. If he checked, I would shove, or if he shoved, I would call on non-diamond and high cards here at the end. But one of the things I learned about this hand, because I was bouncing this off of some of my friends, is about what would you rather have in this particular spot? Because I think a lot of people look at this and they're like, well, it's great to have a jack here because you block pocket jacks. And that is true. If I didn't have a jack, there'd be three combos of pocket jacks. Because I do, there's only one combo. However, so we'll take a look and I'm going to be primarily looking at having jack 10 of hearts here or aces. However, because aces does so much better against ace, queen of diamonds and ace, king of diamonds, if he's not playing pocket jacks fast 100% of the time, you would actually rather have aces in this spot. And it really depends on how often he plays pocket jacks fast. If he played pocket jacks fast 100% of the time, yes, you would rather have jack 10 suited, but it can't be that way that he's always, always going to be doing that with jacks. And so I went into Poker Cruncher and I found a, an interesting, this is Poker Cruncher for Mac, I found an interesting feature where you can partially weight combos of specific hands. And that is exactly what we are going to do here in this particular spot. So I'm going to look at a couple of things and I'll show you. So the primary, the primary draw that we're always going to look at here is him having ace king of diamonds and ace queen of diamonds. Now, once in a while you could say, oh, maybe he's got nine, 10 of diamonds, queen, 10 of diamonds, but we're just going to do that. You know, it's a four bet pot to sort of simplify things. And so if I do jack 10 of hearts versus all the combos of pocket jacks, we can see what our equity is here. It's 32 to 68. Now, this is something that I'm going to do throughout this video. I'm going to swap out aces. And you can see that if he's doing it 100% of the time with jacks, then it is better for me to have jack ton of hearts, I have more equity, right? However, let's go into this function here where we can weight his pocket jacks holdings. So here I'm gonna weight his pocket jacks holdings. I'm gonna say, okay, he only does it 50% of the time with jacks. So it's ace queen plus versus jacks, and you can see it's 62.38. And then when I swap out 
having aces, aces is slightly better. And if you go down the line, you can go down the line here and change jacks out to say 25% of the time. Okay. Now aces is 52, 48. Now, if I swap out jack 10 of hearts here for my aces at jacks at 25%, you can see that it's 58, 42. So the conclusion here in this particular case is the less times that he actually slow plays jacks, the more jack 10 suited goes up in value in this particular spot. And then the more times that he sort of slow plays it, uh, the more aces kind of goes up in value. But let's let's stick right. I'm going to put jacks back in here at 50%. You know, again, against jack 10 suited, it's 62.38. And against aces, it's 61.39 trying to think about what is the absolute best hand we would rather have here. How about having ace jack suited in this particular spot? And you can see now ace jack suited is better than both hands at 58 to 42. And that of course is because we would then block pocket jacks and also have better equity against his nut flush draws. Now, if we were to say stick like queens in here, it's going to be much, much worse. 67, 32, of course, that's because ace, queen of, ace, king of diamonds is a flip. Ace, queen of diamonds still has pretty good equity. And it, it basically goes down the line here with kings here too. So it's a little bit higher. So, you know, at half, you would want ace, jack suited, then aces, then jack, 10 suited. And it all has to do with the weightings of jacks. Now, the other thing that I was also thinking about, and this is what I somewhat washed over, is what about pocket eights? Does he ever raise and call with pocket eights? So we can stick in pocket eights down here as well. And this is going to be almost a super partial. So there's three combos of pocket eights, the ones that don't contain the diamonds, these three. And what I want to do is I actually only want to give him 25% of say two of the combos for like half a combo of pocket eights, you know, fast play off, you know, maybe he only calls like two thirds of the time. So I'll go down here and do that. And then I'll put in 25%. And now we've got jacks at 50%, ace king, you know, ace queen of diamonds, and then eights at 25%. The equities 70, 30. And what you'll find here is that with aces, the more hands that we can find that aren't draws, the better aces are going to do. You can see here, and of course, aces has the improvement factor of oversetting on the turn or on the river, which jack 10 obviously doesn't have. Let's take a look here at ace jack suited against that. You can see it starts to go actually down a little bit because of the fact that aces can improve to a higher set. So that's really something that I learned in this particular spot because of the fact that these sort of nut draws had so much extra equity against jack 10 suited that it trumped the fact that we blocked pocket jacks so i'd actually re probably rather have aces in this spot the other quick thing that i thought too in the heat of the moment as i went through this was is there ever ever a chance just ever ever a chance that he actually might do this with kings like for example kings with the king of diamonds here. So there are three combos of kings with the king of diamonds. And again, let's say I take that out. So, and let's say that he does it with one of the combos of kings, or, or let's say even say half a combo of kings with the king of diamonds here. Let's put in jack 10 of hearts here against that range. So again, this is half jacks, one quarter or one half combo of eights, and then kings. You can see that jacks goes down to 7129, but aces is going to really, really increase here because of course, aces has much, much better equity against kings. So if he ever once in a while does this with kings, jacks, some of the time, once in a while eights, you can see aces is much, much better than having jack 10 of hearts. Now what's the other thing that's really, really interesting about this spot is that what if I had aces with the ace of diamonds? Because in a situation like that, usually with stacked up, you're kind of thinking, well, it's better to have the ace of diamonds because you can prove and pick up a backdoor. 
But when you're facing what in essence is kind of an all-in situation or a situation where you're getting to get it in on the turn, it becomes very, very important and much more important to actually unblock your opponent's draw. Because if I go back into cruncher here with that same range, and now all of a sudden I put the ace of diamonds in here instead of not having the ace of diamonds, then he can't have these draws. And our equity goes down to like 73 to, to 27. So obviously he, in this particular case here, having jack 10 of hearts is gonna be better. Well, it's slightly better in this particular case, but if we took out, say for example, the kings here, you can see it's 70, 30, and now we put in aces with the ace of diamonds, it's really, really bad if we take out kings. Really bad because he doesn't have these draws. So moral of the story is ace jack suited being the best one. If he fast played all of the jacks, then jack 10 suited would be slightly better. But once you throw in any partial of any other combo, whether it's 50% jacks, one quarter of two combos of eights, some kings, then aces is going to become a, a better hand. I would really like to have this one back. I think the play here is to call and then get it in on a non-diamond turn. But the moral here of the story is a lot of people might think on paper, you would actually rather have aces blocking the nut flush draw here pretty much all the time than actually having a hand that contains a jack in it with the exception of ace jack because of its superior properties versus the nut flush draw and the fact that it blocks pocket jacks. So I ended up down 1900 for this particular session. Again, just a, a real embarrassment in terms of uh, VPIP. This is my hand here, but I will obviously live to see another day. Three and a half hours is not a huge, huge sampling of hands, but it just goes to show you. I mean, there were other guys that played like 22, 23% VPIP, up to 25% VPIP that had aces, kings, queens, multiple times ace, king, no ace, queen for me, no ace, king, only a pair one time, but I will be back playing a lot of live streams. And I hope you enjoyed this. If you did hit that like button and subscribe to the channel.